today's uh, webinar from Master Electricians. We wanted to give you a bit of an update on the apprentice situation in relation to the coronavirus. And I do have to firstly apologise for Donna Pickford from Electro Group. Donna's been taken quite ill today, so she was unavailable. She was dying to tell us a lot about um, some of the impact of the virus on their business and some of the strategies they've got in place. Uh, from what I know, um, their training has shut down temporarily. They're having difficulty with their teachers and classrooms maintaining the distance. So they've actually just paused on their training. But their group training scheme is active and going well. She said they've actually got most of their apprentices out working at this stage. So the industry is still quite vibrant in that area. However, we do have a couple of industry experts with us. Firstly, Melissa Stanford, the CEO of AdStuff. Give us a wave, Melissa, so everyone knows who you are. And uh, yeah. Paul Miles, the Managing Director of Busier Work. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Um, so the, the purpose of today is to explore the, the, the apprenticeship in the industry, provide high level information to our members and how to work with their apprentices during this coronavirus and the impact it's had on the industry. So. Melissa, I might start with you. Just give us a, a quick roundup of what your business, how closely you work with past electricians and our members to help out with the apprentices. And what trends have you seen in the apprenticeship space since the virus hit us on March 13, when we really started this process? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Mal. Um, so my name is Melissa Stanford. I'm the, the managing director of the Ad Staff Group. So we specialise in recruitment and apprenticeship services for predominantly electrical and associated industries. Um, so with that, we work very closely with master electricians in providing support networks to their membership. Um, so when it comes to apprenticeship recruitment or apprenticeship mentoring services, um, we currently support over 100 apprentices in our apprenticeship mentoring program, and that's for the full duration of their apprenticeship. Um, so talking with our clients who really range anywhere from being a one-man band up to a large organisation, the consistency we've really seen across these businesses is that they're trying to maintain workforce as much as possible, especially when it comes to apprentices and trainees within their business. Um, looking at what is, after we deliver our current work commitments, what are some other options, other opportunities to diversify to try and keep that workforce strong? Okay, Melissa, what about, uh, we've heard a lot about the government funding that's actually um, being provided to apprentices very early, very early from the federal government fund, from the federal government. Can you take us through the primary packages available to an employer who has some apprentices in the market at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's it's really positive that the government jumped so quickly on this wage subsidy for apprentices and trainees. Um, so the wage subsidy is a 50% um, subsidy of the wages for your trainees and apprentices. And that duration is from the 1st of January through to the 30th of September. So the main criteria around that is that that apprentice or trainee must have been in training and employed with the business on the 1st of March, 2020. And the business also must have a head count of 19 employees or less within the business. So this is really targeted at those small employers, small to medium, to ensure that they're able to keep the funds there to pay those wages of their apprentices and trainees. Um, something that's extremely important is that retention of, of apprentices. The last thing we want is to be in a further skill shortage in another four years. So, you know, holding on to, to staff with that 50% wage subsidy, it's a huge support. Um, so that's $21,000 paid in three instalments of $7,000. So that first submission is available now as of the 2nd of April. Um, our team is certainly working with a lot of employers to help to collate that information they need for their submissions, liaising with the assets, ensuring that they're prepared to get those submissions in and the funds in their accounts as soon as possible. And Melissa, just to clarify there, this is different from the job keeper where you have to demonstrate a downturn in your business by 30%. This is available to any contractor with 19 or less staff or 19 or less apprentices. Yeah, absolutely, Mal. So this um, wage subsidy is available to any employer with 19 or less staff. So um, that is a headcount um, and that it's not apprentices, it is all employees. So apprentices, trainees, they'll, they'll be able to obtain the subsidy for. 
and this is separate from the JobKeeper payment. So the advice that we've received is to, to jump on board now and apply for your wage subsidy, being that it is backdated to that 1st of January, um, ensure that you're getting that support that you're entitled to. Thanks, Melissa. And that's, that's an issue that Paul was explaining to me the other day. And I'll just bring Paul in on the conversation and just, Paul, you might give us a one minute explanation as to the role busy work plays with electrical contractors and setting up their apprentices. But then also take us through what sort of a response busy works had to the coronavirus today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Mal. And um, Busy is obviously most well known as the Australian Apprenticeship Support Network provided in Queensland and in Western Australia. You know, these days though, you know, we run lots of programs, job active, transition to work, disability employment, group training, RTO, all that stuff. But most people know us as the ASIN. Uh, and so we work closely, of course, with yourselves, Malcolm and, and, and Melissa as well, as is a big supporter of Busy. Uh, you know, we, we all work together to help employers, um, particularly in the electrical industry, to find the right apprentice, keep the right apprentice, and then have access to all the government funding that's available. So uh, we, we've been working flat out the last three weeks. You know, this, this stimulus package for apprentices was one of the first that was announced. And so as soon as we heard that, we kind of went into massive uh, preparation and risk mitigation modes. So we had to get the entire company working from home. Uh, we have about 60 people in the call center, in the processing center. So we needed people working from home in case, you know, someone goes down with Corona and, and all of a sudden, you know, the, the call center is quite massively impacted. So we got everyone working from home about two weeks ago. Uh, and, and now in the last week, processing uh, these wage subsidies uh, and I just want to jump on what Melissa was saying it's it's so important to get this right what we're finding already in the short space of time is the return rate on these wage subsidy claims is huge so about 85% of people claiming the money has to be sent back uh, because there's missing wage evidence uh, uh, and it's not being done correctly so I really would encourage you know if you're working with someone like Melissa work with Mel Mel knows his stuff inside out um, you know to, to get these claims in because uh, a lot of employees are having a bit of trouble with it uh, and um, uh, but likewise, it's a fantastic initiative. I'm really happy about it. Um, uh, as well as, of course, if things do don't go the right way, the JobKeeper initiative is is brilliant as well. So Paul, oh, wow. what's your view on the current government assistance package? But also, how if I'm deciding between the the apprentice wage subsidy and the JobKeeper package, which I don't know if I'm going to qualify yet or not because of the rules and how that works, and the legislation hasn't even passed yet. What's your advice on which one to take or can I take both? Well, how does that work? Well, first up, if, you are, if you're eligible for the, the apprenticeship wage subsidy, take it for the first three months of the year. Get, get, get your hands on that as quick as you can. Uh, and then when it comes to the, so that starts on January the 1st, the JobKeeper starts on uh, the 30th of March. So they're, they're, they're two slightly different time frames. So the wage subsidy goes out for the first nine months of this year and then the JobKeeper starts 30th of March. So Look, basically it comes down to financial decision. You can't claim both uh, in the second quarter of the year. Uh, you, you can only claim one or the other. So you've got to make a financial decision. Is, it, is the wage subsidy better for you through the apprenticeships, you know, 50%? Or if you have to climb by 30%, are you better off getting your $1,500 a fortnight? So it's basically a financial decision for your business, uh, depending, of course, on whether or not your business has declined by 30% uh, if you're a for-profit organization. Um, uh, sorry, Mal, I've, I've forgotten the second part of the question already, mate. Oh, look, uh, sorry, how, I think you've answered it. The second part was around how we actually um, coordinate between JobKeeper and Apprenticeship. The first part was, what's your view on the, the government response? Is it hitting the mark for employers to pick up this 50% of the apprentice wage? Yeah, look, there's two parts to this. From a retention perspective, I'm really happy. You know, they've done, with the wage subsidy, with JobKeeper, I, I really am very pleased with the fact that they've um, uh, put in initiatives to, to encourage employers to keep on apprentices, but more broadly keep on their workforce because we're going to need them once we get out of this. Uh, from a commencement in, uh, a, a point of view, I think I'd like to see a little bit more done to help commencements. Certainly, the other thing with the, the wage subsidy to remember is if you were, if, although you have to have an apprentice in place by March the 1st, if you take an out of trades apprentice on, you can actually get access to the wage subsidy anyway, and that goes for all employers. So, um, there is a little bit there for commencements, but it's primarily focused on the out-of-trades apprentices. So, although I'm really, really pleased, I think I'd just like a little bit more done now in those skill shortages, maybe, to encourage commencements uh, post this quarantine, uh, you know, this acute corona uh, period. Excellent, Paul. I'll, I'll just remind the members who are watching online, um, we're more than happy to answer your questions as well. Can I get you to click on the Q&A tab and type in 
any questions you have and whether you want to remain anonymous or happy to, to follow up and, and uh, get some good answers to those questions. I'll, I'll just pose a few more questions to our panelists and then I'll open it up to the floor and, and work through some, uh, some of our members' questions there. So thanks, Paul. Um, Melissa, Paul was talking there around uh, people having a lot of difficulty in the return rate. What sort of role have you been playing with our members to help them get their applications in to get their hands on this funding? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the members who are already actively working with us in uh, ME Mentoring, we have reached out to all of those employers to discuss um, that process and the best way to get their applications in and processed quickly. Um, one of the initial challenges we've seen quite a few times from employers is that wages evidence did need to cover those exact periods. So if they hadn't processed wages, for example, by the second for the 31st, then that submission couldn't yet be made. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, our team are definitely here and available to assist members with any questions they have, helping gather that information um, and to, to talk you through that process. Um, I think so far we've probably seen two that have bounced back, um, but I certainly understand in the broader community that it's, it's been quite consistent. Um, so certainly know that, that you can either reach out to your ASIN or to ourselves for that support. Um, we've been providing that mentoring as well across um, how to manage through the circumstance, um, how to maybe communicate with your apprentices and help understand what their queries and concerns might be. Um, some of that not only has been around what wage subsidies are available, but general um, conversation about keeping positive culture, um, information about healthy mindset, you know, making sure that you're really keeping the team um, across where the business is going and keeping that positive mindset. Mm. And how uh, you obviously mentor a lot of apprentices, how are the apprentices handling the uncertainty at this point in time? Yeah, we've certainly found our team has been working to, to reach out and contact um, all of the apprentices that we work with, um, just to give them the opportunity to talk and raise any concerns that they may or may not have felt comfortable to bring up directly with their employer. Um, a lot of those questions to us so far has been around college. Um, there is a lot of inconsistency out there, depending on what state or what region you're in, as to which TAFEs are going to be open and delivering and which are not. Um, so there's a lot of questions, especially from fourth year apprentices. Will this postpone my fourth year training, my capstone, etc.? So there's certainly that uncertainty. Um, I would encourage all employers to contact your local RTO, engage with your apprentices and have conversations that, you know, about those <coughs> challenges they might be having or the concerns that they might not want to bring up, um, just to keep them educated around that as well. Absolutely. Now, we're getting quite a few questions from the members through, Paul, so I might just jump into some of them and I'll throw one at you around. Is, is there any flexibility that you're aware of in regard to the date of the March the 1st? No, we have no was Thank you, mate. Up, Sorry. We signed up on the 2nd of March being the Monday. Uh, does this apprentice automatically disqual disqualify for the apprentice subsidy? Yeah, sorry. It's it's pretty firm, March the 1st. There's, there's no real way around it, sorry. I don't know, that's not the answer anyone wants to hear, but yeah, apologies. And I'm sure there's, there, we understand the government always has to write rules around this and how quickly they put these programs in place. And uh, we're seeing the current debate around the JobKeeper package. And I, I think this next question I might throw to you as well, where are directors classified as employees for the purpose of qualifying for the 19 or less? Do you know the answer to that one? Uh, I would assume if, if you're a paid employee, even as a director, then I would assume you would be. But uh, I think that's probably something that uh, I'd have to take on notice and double check. But, uh, you know, we, we've got, um, yeah, where directors are paid, my assumption is they're employee just like anyone else. But uh, I'd probably still want to take that one on notice to double check. Yeah, and I do know um, that was an anonymous question. If the, the caller wants to just check in with Jordan or Emma on our hotline, they do know the answer to that question because I know they've answered that one before. Um, so, Melissa, Tony's chasing, where do I go to claim the apprentice wages 50% subsidy? Where do I actually apply to lodge that claim? Yeah, of course. So, um, 
each employee should be receiving a link, a claim link from their apprenticeship centre. Um, so from your ASIN, busy at work, um, whoever your apprentice is registered with, reach out to them. Um, also check your junk. The claim link might be in a junk email file, uh, which should have been received by now. So if not, reach out to, to their support staff who are available um, and ask to have that, that resent to you and make sure the details are correct. So there is no website they can go to. They have to wait on this email and click on the link to actually lodge their claim. Is that how it works? That is how we've been processing all of ours today. Um, Paul, I don't know if Busy at Work have, have another um, avenue or link that's readily available outside of that process. Yeah, it, it's, it's the same sort of thing. Basically, every, every, every uh, employer of an apprentice in Australia got one. I think you've got 100 apprentices, you've got 100 links. So check, check your junk in your emails and uh, otherwise... If you can remember who your ASIN was, call your ASIN, just, just call their number or, or email them uh, and they'll be able to help you and they'll, they'll take you through the same process. Or alternatively, you know, if you, if you can't remember, uh, you know, go to australianapprenticeships.gov.au uh, and they should be able to tell, you should be able to work out, uh, you know, which ASIN to call. But if you're not sure, if you're in Queensland, call us. If you don't use us, we'll help you figure out which one you do use and, and, um, uh, and then you can give them a call. But likewise, I, I really would encourage as well, you know, we've worked with Melissa for years, by all means, this is very unique, Melissa's role in this industry. So, you know, given the massive return rate, make use of Melissa's services and, and, um, and try and get those um, applications in, in such a way that we can process it really quickly so you can get your money as soon as possible. Excellent advice. Um, I've got a question here from James Paul, and he just wanted to be clear on the apprentice claim. We have to choose one or the other. I'm presuming he's asking between JobKeeper and the apprentice claim. Yep. And we'll... Does he have to make that decision or will the government make that decision for him? If he applies for both, will one of them realise and punt him out? Or is, do you have any idea how that's going to work at this stage? Oh, look, if, if you apply for both and you end up getting both because, you know, no one realises then you, you're going to end up in a situation where you have to repay one of them or both, I suspect. So I, I would really just make it uh, your decision and make it a financial decision as to what's best for your business. And again, remember, if you... you well, claim the wage subsidy for apprentices for the first three months. You could, you could do that irrespective of the job keeper. And then really it's a, make it as a financial decision for the next quarter as to whether or not you decline 30% and which one you're going to get the most um, support from. But yeah, it's your decision. And, uh, you know, the reality is the government will hold you accountable if you apply for both. Yeah, clearly it sums and see which one's worth more to you and take yeah, very much so. for your business, but try not to overlap them. Um, Scott's asking another question about this, the, the 19 star pool limit, and I don't know if you've come across this, Melissa, I might just put this one to you, but he's got 19 full-time staff on his books, but has an employee that has been on work cover for almost 12 months. It, uh, this might be one that's really good for our workplace relations team. So, Scott, I might point you to, to give them a call unless you've dealt with that one specifically, Melissa. Um, look, the queries we've had to date have been more around headcount um, as opposed to full-time equivalent in regards to, to somebody on work cover. I think, you know, that would certainly be um, a question that I'd be posing. It's not something we've come across as yet. Um, so definitely the Master Electrician's Workplace Relations team might be the best starting point there. Yeah. Here's another one. Melissa, I might throw to you um, a specific one about getting the incentives. Can we get the wages subsidy for apprentices? We have two apprentices, one first year and one fourth year, and also get the job seeker for our tradesmen. So presume the, the tradesperson's been stood down and they're registered as settling for job seeker, all of which would be employed and in training prior to January. Any recommendations yet to crunch the numbers? Um, so, sorry, could, do you mind just repeating that for me, Mel? So, I, I, there's two apprentices and it looks like the tradesman's been stood down um, and I presume the apprentices have to be still at work to claim the, the apprentice subsidy. You have to be paying wages to the apprentice. Um, so, I'd, I'd certainly suggest in this case that there'd be no reason you couldn't claim the apprentice subsidy for at least the first three months and then you make an assessment based on the criteria and how the numbers work out to add up including the tradesperson you may wish to to reactivate them and bring them back to work for the full 1500 in that case as well does that sound right yeah yeah absolutely um i would suspect that would be the case um there's 
there shouldn't be any any challenge in backdating that um, wage subsidy at this time um, and then revisiting moving forward, which is the best option. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I think that was the second half of Scott's question, got in, but interrupted by another one. Um, but maybe, Paul, is the TIMS smart form, RNWS claim, thanks, John, is that the form we're using to lodge this claim? Say that again, mate, the TMS. TIMS smart form, RNWS claim. So this is beyond me, all these acronyms. So I, I believe so. If that's the one that we emailed out to you, uh, last uh, on the 2nd of April then that's probably the one uh, but I'd have to check the exact name it's, it's the one that was emailed on April the 2nd overnight yeah okay and maybe another one Paul and there's a lot of specific claims about these subsidies yeah there's some really messy sort of uh, I know details yeah. coming with some of these but anything that we're not sure of today I'm happy to take on notice and, and get back to you mate and um, get the answers to everyone Absolutely, and we can, we'd be more than happy to fire out those answers. There's, if we get the 50% subsidy now, but then it gets to July and the work is just not there, we're able to switch to the job seeker payment at that point in time. Yeah, job keeper. So, yeah, absolutely. So, you could claim the, the, the wage subsidy, and then if you decide that the job keeper is better for you, then you start claiming the wage subsidy for apprentices and move to job keeper. Uh, you said the job seeker, which would indicate to me that um, he would stand the apprentice down because there's no work and put the apprentice on the job seeker. That the job seeker is a very different thing. So, 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 so the job keeper one is the one where you basically get the $1,500 for two weeks, and then uh, you can either pay that to the, to the employee uh, and and uh, they receive that plus then you pay their normal wage. So so effectively, you, you, what you can do, the job keep, keeper money is basically there to supplement the wages, uh, so the employer doesn't have to pay those wages. So if, you know if you get thousand dollars a week, usually you'll get the seven hundred fifty plus the two hundred fifty from the employer. Uh, job seeker is something very different. Job seeker is effectively uh, where you move towards you know the, the Centrelink payment because you've been made unemployed. But if but most scenarios, and I would suspect where. Um, in this situation where they're, they're declining by 30 percent you know i really would encourage employers to put their employees on the job keeper because their job keeper payments are actually higher than the job seeker ones yes, yes, yes. and that, another specific one here if uh, if i can work through it with uh job keeper we have two apprentices that earn less than 750 a week payday is thursday well we think we will qualify for job keeper so you you can demonstrate a 30 percent drop in your business do we hold all the risk if we pay them at the full 750 each week and then find out in a month's time they're not eligible for job keeper? Um, how do we avoid paying out the extra to apprentices when we won't know if we are eligible up until after the fact? And uh, if I can answer that one, I'd, I'd be paying my apprentices their, their current pay rate and then you can always back pay them if you do get the the wage subsidy and qualify for it later. I wouldn't be paying them above that rate until you knew for sure that you were getting it and you can always back pay at that point in time, if that makes sense. Um, and maybe Melissa, in some of the claims you've lodged, Tony's just ask, asking what level of evidence is required for the wages um, to demonstrate what their salary is for one of these claims? Yeah, of course. So um, they are looking for wages from um, the first, of course, to prove that the employee was employed during that time. Um, so we're backdating right to the 1st of January to the 31st of March. So that's where we've had some of that, um, those challenges because people's pay week might have gone to the 30th and they're submitting straight away, um, not taking into account that the 31st needs to be included in there. Um, so making sure that you have that evidence available um, to submit with your application. Okay, um, so maybe another one for you, Paul, from Kate. If due to lack of work available for our apprentices or trainees, are we obliged to pay the difference of the 50% subsidy of the apprentice wage claim? So uh, say, say, that again. Say, say that again, mate, yeah. So it looks like we've put the apprentice on to reduced hours. One of the workplace relations strategies to save a few dollars is put your staff back to three or four days a week by agreement. Um, so if we've claimed the apprentice subsidy and you're getting 50% payment from the government, then the decision's made to reduce the working hours. How does that affect? Yeah, you'd apprentice? have to, basically, you'd, because you're going back in time, you'd have to pay 50% of whatever it was they earned. So you'd have to give that 50, 
sorry, the fifty percent would cover you to pay what you you know for the bleh, for the fifty percent that you've paid them. So I'm I'm not quite getting the question. I'll be honest with you. Um, so so if you pay them for wages or whatever wages, you can claim fifty percent of that back and keep that. Yeah. So I, I think it's. Um it's an issue where there's been a decision after the claim for the wage support to reduce the salary okay. through lack of work yeah, and how, how it affects the actual claim and the money getting paid. Yeah, so, so it is, given that you have to show wage evidence for the quarter and we actually backdate it based on what you paid in that quarter, that shouldn't impact it anyway because you're effectively claiming 50% of what you've already paid. And if you then, you know, put them on less hours, then in the next quarter, you'll just claim 50% of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll just direct the members to our website because we do have a lot of helpful information which might answer some of these questions as well on our masterelectricians.com.au slash blog slash funding apprentice trainee. We've got all those, I'm looking at on my other screen here, we've got all that information with a lot of detail and links to all the government websites which might also help you out with some of those specific um, testy claims. But I'll, I would actually suggest members you have a you consider having a good chat to give Melissa a call or Paul a call if you do want to go through some of the finer points of lodging your application. Um, that might actually help out help your your application at this point in time. Get it in right the first time. Get the money soon. It might be a good one. I'm just going to throw one or two more questions at our panelists, which are probably a little bit bigger picture, looking at, at the future too. And, um, and that's probably, Melissa, if I can hit you with, without notice, uh, how important is it for our industry to keep training apprentices? We're in the middle of a downturn. No doubt at some point in time we'll climb out of this and then we'll have a, a screaming mess of no skills available to do the work that we could take advantage of. What's your view on that issue? Yeah, look, I think it's really important for us to remember that we are in a skill shortage industry. Um, so already before, before this time when we have been for some time. So the training of the, the next generation is so important to keep keep that um, you know, labour force consistent into the future and to keep delivering the future needs of industry. Um, you know, emphasis on that, not only consistency of, of the volume of apprentices coming through, but the quality of training that we're providing during this time as well is really important. Um, what we then see on the other side is, um, you know, if we're, we are in a further downturn, that starts to put an increase potentially on salaries, um, can become a more competitive market and pro prove some extra challenges when quoting works if we're unable to find the right staff at the right, at the right costs because the industry has, um, you know, blown out significantly with regards to the cost of delivery. So I think it's really important we start thinking now about how can we manage this well for the next three to six months um, to enable some consistency in the future of, of the workforce. Very important point. There is just one or two more follow-up questions. And one I know is for you, Paul, it's uh, uh, one of our members registered their interest in the apprentice wage subsidy via the busy email. Do we just wait for busy to come back to them or is there something else they need to do in the meantime? No, we, we should just come, we'll, we'll come back to you. I, I will just add apologies. We've had everyone working all weekend. We've been absolutely hammered along with all the other assets since sort of April the 2nd. So it, it's been a huge effort, particularly for, you know, workforce that's now working from home. So uh, a lot of people working over the weekend. We are trying to catch up, but uh, it's just been a, a crazy week. Uh, and I suspect about another week or two we'll be through it. But yeah, if you can hang in there, we will get back to you. And, and just from your knowledge, claims that have been lodged to date, has the funding started yet? What's your expectation when the uh, contractors will actually start receiving the funding? Oh, it's, it's, yeah, as soon as we process them, yep. So basically, uh, we, we start processing them and, uh, you know, there's a few IT issues as always with these new wage subsidies, but, um, you know, as soon as we start processing, the money should hit the bank within a few days. So they are, the government is coming good and paying that quickly? Oh, very much so. Yeah, very much so. They, they've really put it on us, actually, to, to get as much of this money out to employers as we possibly can. So, you know, hence the, the big preparations, getting everyone from home. Uh, they see it as absolutely vital that employers, act, you know, receive this money, keep apprentices working. So, uh, yeah, we'll work around the clock to sort of fulfil that objective. Uh, and if I can just hit you with one last question, Paul, what opportunities should we keep in mind at the other end of this when the market picks up again in relation to our apprentices? 
Yeah, I think a lot of what Melissa just said is that, you know, obviously busy works across all industries, but the big difference with electrical uh, is, is it is a major skill shortage, you know, and, and even after the end of this quarantine period and coming out of Corona, we'll obviously go in some sort of long period of recession, depression type thing, but there will be a mini bounce straight after this. Uh, and there will be a skill shortage in this sector. So I think somehow it's how you retain the workforce, uh, make the most of those all those wage subsidies. Do look at the, the, the very practical option of taking on an out of trades apprentice when the opportunity comes, because you know you get your fifty percent as well for those guys. Uh, but then, of course, really uh, more on a broader sort of level is how you respond to this environment. So having a sort of mindset, uh, you know, a, a busy. We, we recognise the fact that certain parts of our business can be very quiet. So apprenticeship field officers will be quiet for the next sort of three to six months. So we're we're redeploying them, but we're preparing them to be ready for when the market takes off again. So it's trying to work out in your industry uh, that mindset about how you can grow your business in chaos. So, um, you know, looking at where the opportunities will lie, uh, you know, whether it's residential, commercial, uh, and what sectors will grow and expand because of this coronavirus and how you put your business towards that opportunity. Um, that, that's what I'd be looking at and, and sort of, you know, from chaos comes opportunity and how can you maximise that? Okay, it looks like the questions have slowed up. Um, so I'll just ask Melissa, do you have any extra closing comments there, advice to our members in this current time? Yeah, look, just off the back of what Paul was saying, um, there is the opportunity for employers to consider recommencing apprentices um, during this time. So employers, even those who are larger organisations, will be able to support those out-of-trade apprentices who have been let go post the 1st of March and who would have otherwise been eligible to have that subsidy with their employer. They actually almost take that payment with them to the next recommencing employer. So we have already started a register of any apprentices who come to us who are unfortunately let go during this time. And on top of that, um, some employers have begun reaching out to us to say, look, we're in a position we can help. So can you connect us together? So that's certainly another area for consideration that's open to the medium and large businesses as well. Thanks, Melissa. Any closing comments there, Paul? No, I just, just absolutely agree with that. If you've got a resource there with that staff where you've got a, a pool of out of trades apprentices for your sector, then that, that's where you should be going to, you know, access that 50% and help to grow your business. Absolutely. And, and I wish every sector had that sort of resource. Okay, guys. So as a bit of a summary, there's two key payments, the apprentice wage subsidy kicking in from the 1st of January and probably best to take that through until the end of March where if your business has dropped by 30%, and again, that's only for companies with 19 or less employees. Um, <clears throat> but at the other end, from the uh, 30th of March, picking up on the job keeper payments, subject to it getting passed in Parliament tomorrow and the terms fitting suiting your business so you can demonstrate that 30% downturn. I think there's some great opportunities there for you to retain your apprentices and your workforce through this. But I would urge you all to, um, if you have any of these queries about whether directors count and I've got 19 and what date my apprentice started, give our workplace relations team a call or contact Melissa or Paul directly or have a look at our website, which um, Elliot has shared on our chat. If you look under the chat tab, you'll see the link there to click on our website. We've got all the information listed there as well. So um, don't be a stranger, give us a call, sort this out. A little bit of activity right now in the right direction will give you some suitable funding, which hopefully will enable you to retain your workforce and particularly your training program for your apprentices through this. So when we come out of the other end of it, you'll be right and well placed to go to pick up the workforce from there. So I'm gonna finish things up there today. I wanna to thank everyone for joining us. I look forward to catching up with you again on Thursday when I'll have both our presidents um, join us to talk about their own experiences dealing with downturns in the past and how they dealt with them. So special thank you to Melissa. Thank you to Paul. Thanks for your help today. And thanks to all the members who join us. We'll catch up with you shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, all.